In this video, we will discuss modern portfolio theory, our mean variance analysis, which was developed by Harry Markowitz and published in a 1952 article. He won the Nobel Prize for this theory in 1990. The objective of mean variance analysis is for an investor to maximize his expected rate of return while minimizing his standard deviation. The theory looks at statistically how the investor would combine a portfolio of assets to accomplish this objective. In general, the expected rate of return of a portfolio of assets is going to be the weighted sum of the expected rate of return of each individual assets. And of course, the sum of the weightings has to add up to one. If we measure risk by standard deviation, then the standard deviation of the portfolio squared is going to be the sum of the weightings squared of the standard deviation of each individual asset squared plus the sum of each individual assets, um, the weighting thereof times the weighting of another asset, the standard deviation of one times the other, and the correlation coefficient between the two of them. So if they are not correlated at all, this would be zero. If they are exactly correlated, this would be one. And if they are negatively correlated, this would be minus one. This is a rather complex calculation and generally is only done with computers. So for the purpose of teaching in class, we look at very simple situations like for only two assets. If we only have two assets, then the expected rate of return of the portfolio is the weighting of one asset times the expected rate of return of that asset. And since the two weightings have to add up to one, it would then be plus one minus the weighting of the first asset, which would be the weighting of asset B times the expected rate of return of asset B. The complex standard deviation equation reduces to the standard deviation of the portfolio squared equals the weighting of the first asset A squared times the standard deviation of asset A squared plus the weighting of asset B squared times the standard deviation of asset B squared plus two times the weighting of A times the weighting of B, standard deviation of A, standard deviation of B, and the correlation coefficient of the two of them. If the correlation coefficient between the two assets is one, then this formula reduces to just a weighted average of the two assets. Under this circumstance, there is no advantage to diversification since the standard deviation of the two assets is just the average between them. You don't get any reduced risk by adding more assets. Under the ideal situation of the correlation coefficient being a negative one, then we end up with the standard deviation of the portfolio is the weighting of A times the standard deviation of A minus the weighting of B times the standard deviation of B. Under this circumstance, we can reduce the risk of the portfolio to zero while still making a positive rate of return. Uh, this would be the ideal situation for a hedge fund to look for, but doesn't really exist in investments. If the standard deviation of one of the assets is zero, like the risk-free rate of a bank account, then the standard deviation of the portfolio is just the weighting in A times the standard deviation of A. So we see here the ideal situation. If we have two assets together, we can reduce the risk to zero if they are negatively correlated, perfectly negatively correlated. We have no benefit if they are perfectly, perfectly positively correlated. And anywhere between these two, we get diversification. And from that diversification, we lower the risk of the portfolio. As we add in more and more assets, we can find the so-called minimum variance portfolio, which is here. It turns out that that isn't actually the ideal portfolio for people to invest in because they have the option of investing in the risk-free rate of the bank account. If we add the risk-free rate of a bank account, then what we actually want is a tangent portfolio up here. Under this circumstance, then everybody would intend to invest in this uh, tangency portfolio for ideal diversification. And if they want a lower risk in the risk-free rate, if they want to increase risk, assuming they can borrow and lend at the same risk-free rate, then they would borrow at the risk-free rate and invest up at this line. 
In this ideal world, everybody would invest in the same portfolio, which would be something like Vanguard's total stock market index portfolio, which is the entire United States stock market, or the Vanguard world stock index portfolio, um, which is under the ticker symbol WT. The first one is under the ticker symbol WITSX. If you are familiar with calculus and you want to find this minimum variance portfolio, you would do that by taking the derivative of the minimum variance portfolio, this equation, setting it equal to zero, and then finding WA and WB, and you get these two weightings. We will explore this further in other videos. I thank you for watching this video.